Paul Tracy is uh, in peril of being lapped here as you look at Gilda Farron and Alex Zanardi. And Zanardi pulls off and heads in for the pits. Gilda Farron stays out. So Alex Zanardi in second place. Heads down. His teammate, you saw him in earlier. Zanardi answering the requirement of 60 miles an hour on the pit road, Jackaroot. And at 60 miles an hour, being positioned exactly at pit out, it makes for a long drive by Alex Zanardi. He comes in, hits the marks exactly. Now we will see if there are any chassis changes wing-wise on Zanardi's car. It doesn't look as if there will be. They asked if he wanted more wing. He said no. 13.1. Zanardi's away. And the good news is that he only had to maintain the speed limit for about 100 feet there and then can come right back up to speed. Except, of course, as Danny Sullivan mentioned, the problem with joining into traffic at the first turn because you're joining on the high speed line. So DeFerrin, we watch for him, see what the tactics will come out of Jim Hall's team. He's he, still the leader of the race. And he's still going another lap. He must be getting fabulous mileage. So with Zanardi making the stop, and DeFerrin getting around Tracy. You saw Roberto Moreno and Hiro Mashusta there, both in the, in the picture on the main stretch. The whole play of the race now lies in the hands of uh, Jim Hall and his most capable team for Jill DeFerrin. And since we're watching Jill, and as we wait to see if he's going to come in, some of the other, uh, other rumors, we talked about the rumor that he was going to Formula One, but uh, uh, he has denied it thus far and uh, denied it in a way that makes you truly believe it. Uh, some of the other questions is, uh, are like what happens to Robbie Gordon? Uh, indication that he has a potential uh, over in NASCAR, a potential different IndyCar ride, though I would have thought his contract at Walker uh, would preclude both of those. You heard anything, Danny? Well, I have, and of course he's talking about moving over to Barry Green, where I think they're going to have their Indy Light sponsor move up uh, and uh, come on to an IndyCar. And also hear that uh, Pennzoil is going to move from Jim Hall, possibly, to another team. And that Joel DeFerrin might switch, uh, could it even be to maybe where Robbie Gordon is moving from? Well, we label all of those as rumor. And uh, while we're at it, a guy here looking for a ride, Buddy Lazier, hanging around. He, he and his dad both have been at most of the races. Uh, and there is some question whether or not he might be looking for a ride as well. And of course, let's not forget also Davy Jones has been uh, seen around and is looking for a ride. Well, in fact, we expect Davy Jones to come up in a in a car very shortly here. I gotta believe that DeFerrin is going to come in on this. He can't go if he goes any further. I'd have to go down and check and see how big that fuel tank is that he's got in that car. Well, let's see what he does here. He's heading straight for the pit road. So leader Jill DeFerrin is in. He led 67 of 90 laps here last year. He's led 23 today. Jack Aroot? Paul, this will make it very dicey as far as the amount of whether he'll have to come in again. By our calculations, it would be late in the race for a splash and go. Jill DeFerrin, 60 miles an hour. He comes to a stop, and the crew quite simply goes to work. See no chassis changes. Jim Hall anticipates no changes. And we watch Zanardi as he closes down. There is DeFerrin, still sits on the pit road. And see where he comes out relative to Zanardi. There's the last, the ninth and tenth turn. Now Zanardi has full speed on the straightaway. DeFerrin can pick it up to full speed. And we'll see where they join one another. Well, DeFerrin took the advantage in that one because there is Zanardi coming through. So DeFerrin has made his stop. And the reason would tell you that you're going to end up with uh, with one more stop, certainly out of DeFerrin. And look at this. This is Michael Andretti. And he knows what this is for. He's going down there for the lead. And don't forget, he's been out there. So his tires are very warmed up. His fuel is a little lighter. And Gilles DeFerrin is trying to get the, the heat in his tires right now to really make a run back in there. He's got to be careful. He doesn't want to overdo it. And look who's right behind him. That's Zanardi, who's been out for two laps, too. So his car, is, his tires are up to temperature. So all together right there. And the leader on the track for one lap as Zanardi makes the move inside to Ferrum was Greg Moore. But he's made a stop. He's in now, Gary. Yeah, when he came in, Paul, they went for the short fuel stop. But he hit one of the...
the tires banged it up against the wall. There was a momentary problem at the left front. It was very close to injuring a crewman. Fortunately, nobody is hurt. At least that's what Phil LePan is checking on right now. Yeah, everybody's okay on the left front, but a very close call as Moore just missed the mark by a precious few inches, and it was a precarious moment for the changer on the left front. And a fire a little further down the pit area. Wait a minute, that looks like Mark Blundell bending over the wall right there. That's his helmet right there, and there, they've got some safety people there and his crew around him. I, I don't know what's happened, whether uh, they're trying to get his helmet unbuckled, it looks like. There's a lot of liquid on the track right there. I wonder if they had a little fire. See all that water around? That usually means that they had some kind of a fire and they dumped water. Yeah, I wonder, the race car, obviously, they got it out of the area. And we will continue to check on Mark Lundell as the leader of the race is Michael Andretti. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. The Burke Lakefront Airport on board with Robbie Gordon. In just two weeks, we'll go across the border to Canada. Five-time winner Michael Andretti will go for a sixth win at the Molson Indy Toronto. Coverage begins Saturday with qualifying on ESPN2. And then the race itself on Sunday, July 14th, right here on ABC Sports. So with a, with a great deal of confusion, the lead now falls to Michael Andretti. And there is Mark Blundell with his distinctive helmet. But it sure looked like the other one. Well, uh, th that's, that's the crewman that got hurt. But what we've discovered is, of course, that they wear the helmets painted like their driver. And they all had it on, so we've mistaken that that was Mark Blundell. Gary Gerald, can you add to this? One of the crewmen, the fueler, Tim Love, is being attended to by safety officials Bruce McCaw with this team. Bruce, can you tell us what happened? Was there, in fact, fire? There was a small fire. They got a little bit of a fuel spill. The, the fire was fairly minor. And, and your fueler, apparently, just trying to get out of the area, may have injured a lower extremity. Is I that think so, yeah. Not believed to be serious? Doesn't appear to be serious. He, he seems to be fine. He's, just, he's got a sore leg, and we're just not sure. We'll just rather be safe. And rather unnerving nonetheless yeah okay thank you very much that's the word from uh, bruce mccall the pack west pit and uh, they work with the fielder down here paul at this time all right so good news there out of the pack west team and the good news from mark blundell who of course continues in the fight the fire obviously didn't do anything to uh, cause the car to be pulled from competition michael andretti is the leader alex zanardi jill de Ferrin third then alan Ter jr adrian fernandez brian herta Andre Ribeiro, and he's in the pits, Jack. And this should be Andre's last stop. They've taken on all the tires they need. Now they're going to take a full load of fuel. As soon as they've got it through the event hopes they do, he's off and away. A little bit longer than normal for the stop, simply to take on as much fuel as possible. They don't intend to come back in. And the course marshals are uh, reporting this as debris on the course piece of carbon fiber with some Zoof fittings on it. Well, that looks like maybe off the front wing on the edge. They might have banged it over something or hit something. That's just an aerodynamic device, but it's still something you do not want to run over. But that's pretty much out of harm's way, but I'm sure they want to get it out of there. Andrew Ribeiro pitted on lap 30 again on the 61st lap. We're now on the 62nd with Michael Andretti leading. Let's go back to Gary Gerald. Well, we just want to clarify the fueler's last name is Doubt that Bruce McCall was confused, as you can well imagine, in this uh, scramble down here to see if all of his people were all right. But Tim Doubt that is the man who's getting the attention to his lower right leg. He's uh, talking with the folks down here, seems to be in great spirits. I don't think it's a significant or a major problem, but we wanted to make the clarification on the name, Paul. Yeah, better news yet that uh, he's he's palling around with his buddies down there. These guys work so hard. You can go back in the paddock late at night, and they're still constantly at it. We watch the leader of the race down from one of America's most enduring corporate images, the Goodyear blimp. It's overhead giving us the aerial views today and has been focusing on the front of the race, Michael Andretti being chased by Zanardi. There's Michael. Update on Michael, Jackaroot. 
Well, Paul, the radio chatter between Lee White and Michael Andretti has not been real favorable about the performance of the engine. Michael has been complaining since, oh, about 10 laps into the race. He does not feel the engine is running the way it should. And all Lee White can keep saying is 10-4, simply because Michael's in the lead. Yeah, not a whole lot you're going to do about it there. You certainly don't want to bring him in. Fourth race that Michael has led this year. He won the other three, so maybe this is a good omen for Michael Andretti. 64 laps complete. 